In 1961, a couple was on their way home from a vacation when they were confronted by strange beings. Their encounter and the following story made national news and shook both of them to their core. The story of Barney and Betty Hill. This is Red Web. So Betty and Barney Hill were a couple in their early 40s from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Now, this will come back later, but it's worth noting that they were an interracial couple, which was very uncommon for the 1960s. Love to see it. Yeah, love to see it. The couple hadn't been on vacation for a very long time and spontaneously decided to go on a three-day road trip up to Niagara Falls and visit the Montreal area. On September 19th, 1961, this is when everything kind of kicked off. They started their drive back to Portsmouth, and they had planned to get home around 3 a.m. Now around 10.30, just south of Lancaster, New Hampshire, Betty saw a bright light moving in the sky somewhere between the moon and where Jupiter was located at that time. But the light only seemed to grow, becoming brighter as it started to move a little bit more erratically. Betty asked Barney to pull the car over so they could get a closer look at that object, and they stopped at a picnic area just south of Twin Mountain. Betty, looking through binoculars, saw what she thought was a flying craft, and at first, Barney believed it was just an airplane. But suddenly, the craft turned to their location, and Barney then changed his mind. They got back in the car and quickly drove away toward Franconia Notch, a narrow mountain pass in the White Mountains. And they started driving slowly when they saw the craft again so they could try to observe it. They saw it fly over a signal tower on Cannon Mountain, and they said it looked like it was rotating and it had flashing lights, multicolored lights, and that was all before they noticed that it was actually descending upon them at that time. Barney stopped in the middle of the highway, and it hovered silently above them, about 100 feet above the ground. Well, Barney gets out of his car, I don't know what he's thinking, and he describes the craft as large and pancake-shaped, and they see about 8 to 11 entities looking down on them. What? Now, the whole... It's like a minivan of aliens. Yeah, yeah, the whole family's in there. At this point, they said most of these figures had turned, walking towards something in the ship, but one stayed behind. Okay, so Barney, at that point, said that he saw bat-like wings with red lights outstretched from the vessel and came down from the ship. Gut instincts back in check. He yells at Betty. He says, they're going to capture us, and he runs back to the car. Now, as they drive, Betty opens the window to look at the craft, and they heard strange noises, such as, like, beeping and buzzing noises. Then they said they experienced a dullness of their consciousness. And when they finally came to, they heard the same beeping and buzzing noises, and they were on the same road, but they were 35 miles away. And all they could recall at this point was uh, that they had taken a sharp turn at some point in the car, stopped in front of a fiery orb, and then that was it. I would go to a doctor. Who knows what happened? You know? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I mean but like to have two people share this very vivid experience. Uh, I mean, maybe they're in it together. Maybe. So when they arrived home, it wasn't until that moment when they realized that they were arriving two hours later than they expected. Meaning that they had lost two hours of time somewhere in that kind of blackout state and at this point they started noticing other things right for example the strap on the binoculars was ripped their watches had both stopped working and would never work again barney's shoes had been incredibly scuffed and betty's dress was torn and had a very strange pink powder on it and the final detail that's a bit odd here is that a shiny circles appeared on the trunk of their car and what's even weirder is when you bring a compass to these new shiny circles you know, like buff spots on the back of their trunk, mm -hmm. the compass would start spinning as if it was interfering with the magnetic field. And it was this all like verified by, I don't know, scientists. <laughs> and, I mean, and like that authorities is a and valid stuff. question. <laughs> that is a valid question. And Betty at this time seemed to believe that they had seen a UFO. But anytime she brought that up, Barney wouldn't hear it. Didn't want to, didn't want to talk about that. Did, didn't know th there's no UFOs, there's no aliens in play here. But a few days later, two days actually, on September 21st, Betty finally reported the incident to the nearby Peace Air Force Base. Wanting to take them seriously, Betty, when talking to them, left out certain details, so that way, obviously, they wouldn't get laughed at and turned away. And Major Paul Henderson actually contacted her the next day, and after hearing their account, said that 
they had probably just misidentified Jupiter, which I'll be honest, I've stargazed a few times in my day and I'm not going to say, you know, Jupiter hasn't ever leapt out at me with, <laughs> yeah, with eight like to 11 what? men and knocked me out. Like, I'm, I'm just saying 10 days after the incident, Betty then began having strange nightmares. She said that they were all incredibly vivid and very distressing, very disturbing. Betty ultimately over the next five nights from there had five dreams, one per night. And she only told her husband Barney about the very first one. She took notes on these dreams, and here's kind of what those notes outline. In each dream, she was with Barney in the forest. She saw five-foot-tall beings with gray skin, dark eyes, and hair. These individual five-foot-tall beings were also wearing shiny dark uniforms. A man examined Betty's body and later took her to a leader, as she called him, that spoke to her. She looked at a book with strange symbols, and when she asked the leader where they had come from, he showed her a map with dotted stars, basically a holographic map. And this is when Betty came to believe that the night they couldn't remember uh, was the night that they were abducted by aliens, that these dreams were actually memories, that these dreams were telling her something, and she finally felt like she could get a little bit of closure on maybe what had happened. The story of Barney and Betty Hill is so disturbing, there are so many extra details to uncover, and if you want the theories as to what went on here, check out Red Web wherever you get podcasts.